today on Rock the Park. Oh my gosh. Wow. I was not expecting this. We're in Hawaii, and it's no day at the beach. This is an adventure, man. We're climbing at about 12,000 feet to the summit of a volcano. We'll try to summit the world's largest and still active volcano. I don't know if my lungs have ever been pumping this much before. I'm definitely working. But the extreme altitude could stop us dead in our tracks. Ooh, man. You all right? Ooh, I've got a headache. It's crazy, man. Can we conquer Mauna Loa, or will the volcano conquer us? What an epic last obstacle to have to get past. Hawaii Volcanoes takes our breath away. And it all starts now. I'm Jack Stewart. And I'm Colton Smith. We love the national parks. Oh my gosh. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it. Just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Wow! Ready for the time of your life? Yeah! Get set to rock the park. The Big Island of Hawaii is a land of epic contrast. From its green rainforest and tropical waters to the black sand beaches and rugged coastlines. but it's probably best known for its explosive history. Welcome to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, home to two of the most active volcanoes on Earth. 70 million years of volcanic eruptions formed the Hawaiian Islands, and the Big Island is still growing due to constant lava flows. Mauna Loa is the world's largest volcano, and we're gonna attempt to reach its summit. Not only is Mauna Loa the planet's largest volcano by mass, but when measured from its base below sea level, it's easily the tallest, rising 56,000 feet, almost twice the size of Mount Everest. Kilauea, the park's other active volcano, has been erupting nonstop since 1983. And we want to see it up close as well. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park is located on the southeastern edge of the Big Island, more than 2,000 miles from the nearest continental landmass. It rains a lot in this park, and today at the summit of Kilauea, we've got plenty. It's beautiful out here. I know. <laughs> it's a great day. This is part of what makes this park so amazing. We can get 180 inches to 200 a year, and that's what gives us that amazing Hawaiian native rainforest we have. What's even more amazing is that Kilauea is currently erupting just a few hundred yards away. Inside that crater lies a 2,000 degree lava lake. We can't safely get any closer. Throughout its history, Kilauea has erupted from three areas. The summit we just saw and two rift zones where cracks in the earth allow it to erupt along its sides. Ranger Jay Robinson is taking us to the eastern side. During this eruption, there were giant fountains of lava shooting up in the sky that rained down in here. Two giant deep craters were completely filled up with lava. And that mountain over there, that steaming Mount Ulu, 400 feet high, that grew up in the five years of the eruption. So are we going to be hiking through this? Oh, yeah. This forest is a snapshot of what the area used to look like before the eruption. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, crazy. We're getting to walk over lava rock. It's just black rocks everywhere. This is where the eruption began on the early morning in May 1969. Whoa. Big crack opened up in the ground. Oh, <laughs> oh man. my gosh. <laughs> oh, holy cow. That's insane. I love how it just looks like this crack goes down to the core of the Earth. Well, it does go down several miles. When the eruption began, magma spewed high into the sky, and minerals in the molten rock quickly oxidized in the steam, leaving behind these bright colors. Now, check this out. See that level down there below us? Yeah. yeah. That's the original ground level when the eruption began. Wow. That's where the crack opened up. And as the lava came out, it was shooting up here hundreds of feet high. And as it flowed out, it built up all this land we're standing on now. So this is fresh stuff. Wow. wow. And check this out. These are lava trees, where lava enveloped trees like mummies. It's hard to believe that anything could live in this stark environment, but life does go on. All right, I spotted a nene. They look like Canada geese, but they're not. 
The Nene is the Hawaii state bird and is descended from Canada geese. Look at their neck. It's so different than the Canada geese, where the, the Canada geese have this black neck and a little white stripe, but look at that. Nene are found only in Hawaii, and only about 2,000 remain. 130 of those are in this park. They eat berries from plants that manage to grow on the lava flows. This is like sheet flow, big sheets of lava flow down. Wow. You'll not see that very many places. Looks like cement. At the summit, Jay tells us we need to ask Pele, the volcano goddess of Hawaiian legend, for permission to approach the volcanoes. I like that idea of asking permission and humbling yourself before entering. Oh my gosh! Holy cow! Wow! I was not expecting this. The lava would upwell in there and just flow out as a sheet. And the lava would come up and sink down and drop back down in. And it constructed this hole around itself, higher and higher. Sheets of lava flowed seven miles to the sea, burning and burying forests, roads, and cultural sites. Woo! It's a lot toastier over here. Oh, yeah. But this is nothing compared to how we end our day. Back up at the summit, Kilauea is putting on quite a light show and reminding us of the explosive power that we are standing on. Look at that, dude. Wow. That is insane. It's crazy to think that down there, there's a pool of lava that is over 2,000 degrees. Churning lava. It's just glowing against that steam that's coming off of it. That's amazing. This is a great reminder of how many active volcanoes are here at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. The one we're climbing tomorrow is just as active. We're in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, where after an explosive first day, we're preparing for our biggest challenge yet, hiking to the summit of Mauna Loa, the world's largest volcano. We're outside the Mauna Loa Observatory at 11,000 feet, where hikers are advised to camp overnight to properly acclimate to the elevation. All right, you all set for this? Yeah, I'm ready, man. What about your oxygen? <laughs> Got the oxygen right here. Never gone hiking where I've actually needed a tank of oxygen. You ready? The summit awaits us. All right. Altitude sickness is common above 8,000 feet. It can cause severe headaches, nausea, and fatigue. And for some people, it can be deadly. So out here, we need to drink plenty of water and watch for symptoms. The only way to cure altitude sickness is to come back down, and that will be really disappointing. Ooh. Our goal today is to get to a cabin that's just shy of the summit. It's about six miles to the cabin, which sits at 13,000 feet. That will give us a chance to acclimate to the altitude, but that isn't our only concern. We're up so high that it will actually snow, and they get blizzards at the top of Mauna Loa. We're in Hawaii. I didn't think it was possible to be caught up in a snowstorm, but that's a factor today. Oh, wow. You can see the ocean. We're up above 11,000 feet, higher than we've really hiked before, and we're headed two and a half thousand feet up. Somewhere down there, there's warm beaches and palm trees. Not where we're going. This is pretty awesome. Right away, we're already off trail, just hiking on lava flow. Mauna Loa spits out more lava in a week than Kilauea does in an entire year, which is really crazy to think about. So when this guy erupts, he wants to put on a show. Mauna Loa has erupted 33 times since 1843, and as recently as 1984. Sharp lava rocks are just all over the place. You have to make sure that you're stepping in the right spot. There is no trail. Our path is marked by giant rock cairns. These are our only trail markers. You gotta make sure we, we pay attention because if you miss one, you're gonna get lost. You can't stake a tent into this rock either. So we have to make it to the cabin before nightfall or get caught out in a potential snowstorm at 13,000 feet. We've got great weather right now. <laughs> We're still at 12,000 feet. By the end of the day, our weather could potentially get much worse as we continue to climb. 
Another Karen. We're on the right track. Oh man, I gotta say I'm short of breath though. This mountain is pushing our limits for sure, but then we come across something that is very reassuring. This is unbelievable. Pure shelter. Somebody's wow. built a nice wall over here. You get out of the elements quick in this thing. This is a collapsed lava tube. When molten lava flows downhill, the surface will often harden while the lava inside continues to flow, leaving behind an empty tunnel. It's crazy, this stuff almost looks like paint or clay, but at one point, it was actually 2,000 degrees. If we run into trouble, we'll have a spot where we can lay low for a while. Oh, Karen's this way. Oh man, and look at that. You see all the snow against yeah. the mountain? Oh yeah, that is snow. And we're in Hawaii. Not what you think of. We've been hiking for a couple miles and we're both starting to feel the effects of the altitude. It doesn't necessarily matter how good a shape you're in. If your lungs and your body's not used to being up so high, you're gonna struggle with it. My breathing's getting a lot heavier. We're exerting a lot of energy and I've never hiked at this altitude before. This major landmark confirms we've hiked up past 13,000 feet. Oh, man. This is North Pit. It stands between us and our cabin. You can see some Karens out there. You see those way out there? Oh, yeah. So it looks like we are going to be trekking through this bad boy. We have to make it to our cabin before the sun drops, before it gets really cold up here. Feels like we're in some sort of canyon. Look at that. But we're really inside the caldera of a volcano. It seems nice and peaceful, you know, nice and calm. There's just a sleeping giant underneath us right now. Oh, yeah. Just a enormous volcano. You all right? Oh, I've got a headache. Drink some water. So we've been hiking for a long time, and I develop a headache. A headache is a sign of altitude sickness, and Jack could be in trouble. It's weird. It's like a, it's like a splitting headache. Really? Yeah. It's not even like, it's just like right in one spot. I've followed protocol to acclimate to the altitude, and I've been drinking tons of water. But supplemental oxygen can really save you if you get into trouble. <sighs> Bottoms up. We're five miles from where we started. It's too late to head back before nightfall and Jack needs to rest. But the best place to do that is the cabin. It's still a mile away. I'm trucking along, but you can definitely feel this altitude. <sighs> kind of makes you feel like your head's just getting smaller and smaller. Jack has started to fall behind. And it's not that he's moving slower, he doesn't look that good. Definitely getting really tired. This terrain, like to walk on, is just draining. It's awful. We're hiking to the top of the world's largest volcano, Mauna Loa, in Hawaii. We're at 13,000 feet, and Jack is showing signs of altitude sickness. We need to reach our cabin so he can rest. But at this altitude, our last mile is one of the most difficult we've ever hiked. At this point, what we're hiking through is like a minefield. My only goal right now is to get to the cabin so I can feel better. Ah, I see it. What? Yeah, I see our cabin. We're like dead on. It's a little ways out there still. Oh, see yeah. it? Little tower right there? Yeah. Yes. OK, good. Oh, my gosh. I know if I get there, I can lie down, acclimate to this altitude, and feel better. Well done, dude. Mauna Loa cabin, elevation 13,250 feet. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to be here. The Mauna Loa cabin sits on the east rim of the volcano's caldera. It's free to backpackers hiking Mauna Loa who have reserved it and obtained a backcountry permit. Let's see what we got. Woo! It's got that cabin smell, that's for sure. Nice little bunkhouse. Yeah. Let's do it. 
Before we crash, we can't resist taking a look at where we'll be going tomorrow. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Look how big of a drop that is. That's insane. And I'm not stepping here. Mauna Loa's summit caldera measures four miles long by one and a half miles wide. It last erupted more than 30 years ago, and it's still steaming. I'm pretty sure that all the way over there on the other side at the highest point, that's the summit. And that's where we're trying to get to tomorrow. This is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's hard to focus on how beautiful this place is because you're so obsessed with your breathing and your footing. But then finally to have a moment to watch the sunset, you're reminded at how amazing this place actually is. It's a new day and after a good night's sleep, Jack is feeling much better and we're both well rested. We did this the right way. We spent the night at 11,000 feet the day before, made our way up here to over 13,000 feet, spent the night. It's gonna be a challenge, but one way or another, we're getting to that summit. All right, you ready? I'm ready, man, let's do this. To the summit. We'll follow Rock Cairns 4.7 miles around the caldera's edge to the summit. It'll be the hardest part of our hike. Exerting energy still really takes it out of you and leaves you short of breath. Whoa, man. Look at this. This is crazy. Whoa. Check this out. We are at one of those rifts that opened up and spewed lava out. It's just a big, big trench. And that lava was probably shooting 15 to 20 feet up into the air. It's crazy. We've been hiking this whole time, dude. I haven't seen one sign of like plant life or anything on this entire mountain. I'm thinking we're closing in on maybe a little over a mile until we reach the summit. And I'm breathing pretty heavy. Whew. Oh man. Whew. We haven't gone as far as we thought we did. Oh, the summit's still two miles away. I thought we were way closer than that. Ooh, that's gonna be real tough. We've come this far, look at this. We're above the clouds. We've got our oxygen, we've got our water, we'll be fine. To the summit. In Hawaiian, Mauna Loa means long mountain, fitting for our long journey to the summit. Right now, we think we can see the summit. And we got weather that's creeping up in back of us. Nevertheless, we're getting there. We're so close. I want to say we're two, 300 yards away. Almost there. Just got to keep pushing it. Final stretch, man. This is it. Oh, yeah! This is it? Woo-hoo! Yes! All right. Wow. We reached the summit of Mauna Loa. This is such an amazing feeling. This is what we worked hard to achieve, to be standing at the top of the world's largest volcano. Man, well done, dude. That wasn't easy. That was not easy. As much as you want to scream because you're so pumped to be up here, whoo, it's hard. What's amazing is we're standing at the top of an active volcano. At the bottom of this crater, below the surface, there's a huge lake of lava. And that's pretty cool. There's one final step to complete our journey. Those who summit Mauna Loa can record their names in the logbook. Now it's official. When you think of Hawaii, you think of palm trees and beaches, but you gotta go further and you gotta explore places like Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. It is rough, it is rugged, and it's intense. What this showed me is that if you make the right preparations and do the right stuff, you can push on and really achieve things you didn't think you were able to do. And remember, hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.